Everybody laughed at China for burying tons of plants in desert. Ten years later, they regretted it. Can you believe one of the harshest deserts on Earth, once swallowing villages, blowing sand as far as South Korea, Japan, and even the U.S. West Coast is now blooming? What seemed impossible has happened in China. Over a decade ago, the world chuckled at images of workers burying straw in neat squares across a desert. Scientists shook their heads, calling it a waste of resources. Environmentalists doubted its sustainability. Early reactions to the Great Green Wall ranged from cautious optimism to outright disbelief among scientists and environmentalists. Yet, in 2024, a little-noticed event quietly marked a turning point. A green belt over 3,000 km long was completed around the Taklamakan Desert, created by 78 billion trees planted over nearly half a century. Not a flashy scientific victory, not a grandiose media proclamation, just a quiet miracle. Now, what was once deemed hopeless is being studied by the African Union, Central Asia, and global environmental organizations seeking to replicate its success. Why has a project once ridiculed become a global model for ecological restoration? Why is a land once choked by sandstorms now reviving with forests, lakes, and life? And most importantly, could this be the ecological key in a world increasingly scarred by climate change? Join Top 10 Discoveries, official to uncover the extraordinary story behind an ecological transformation, forged not by magic, but by technology, long-term vision, and remarkable persistence. Picture a land nearly five times the size of Texas, where the sun scorches, the ground cracks, and winds carry sand that can bury entire villages. This isn't a doomsday vision, it's the reality of desertification in China. China faces one of the 21st century's greatest environmental challenges, desertification on a massive scale. Estimates suggest Niuar 2.6 million kilomawara of land, 27% of the nation's territory, is directly affected or at high risk of becoming desert. This isn't just a statistic on a map, it's a vivid reality unfolding across vast northern and northwestern regions. Areas like Xinjiang, Inner Mongolia, Gansu, Qinghai, and Ningxia are hotspots where desertification has left its starkest mark. The Taklamakan Desert, one of the world's harshest, has 85% of its area covered in shifting dunes, meaning sand constantly moves with the wind posing risks to people and infrastructure. A striking example of the crisis is Ibi Lake, once among Western China's largest inland lakes. Over recent decades, due to climate change and unsustainable resource use, it has shrunk to less than a third of its original size. Ibi Lake's quiet but alarming disappearance is a clear warning of desertification's pace and what's at stake without timely action. Among desertification's most visible and haunting effects, sandstorms are the most feared by Chinese citizens and neighboring countries. In 2006, China recorded an average of 17 major sandstorms annually. These storms don't stay within borders. Many stretch hundreds of kilometers, crossing the Yellow Sea and impacting air quality in South Korea, Japan, and even the U.S. West Coast. For urban residents, especially in Beijing, sandstorms aren't just extreme weather. They're a constant threat to health and daily life. Fine dust clouds drastically reduce visibility, disrupt traffic, delay flights, and temporarily freeze city life. The deeper impact is on health. Fine dust particles infiltrate respiratory systems, increasing rates of lung, sinus, and allergic conditions, especially in children, the elderly, and those with chronic illnesses. During peak sandstorm days, air quality indexes, AQI, in major, Cities often soar past safe levels, forcing people indoors or into specialized masks. Sandstorms aren't just a short-term symptom of desertification. They're a wake-up call about what's happening to natural ecosystems as the line between living and dead land blurs. When desertification is mentioned, many picture cracked fields, spreading dunes, or blinding sandstorms. But there's a less discussed, more poignant consequence. Many have been relocated from lands no longer viable for farming or living in China. Over 400 million people live in areas at high risk of desertification, a figure surpassing the entire U.S. population in 2024. These communities don't just live near deserts, they face the rapid loss of arable land, 
water sources, and stable climates, the three pillars any civilization needs to survive. As a result, China has witnessed a rare modern phenomenon, ecological migration, not driven by conflict or economic crisis, but by nature changing too fast for life to continue as before. In Inner Mongolia, one of the hardest hit regions, tens of thousands of families have been relocated. This isn't just physical movement, it's a shift in livelihoods, culture, and lifestyles. Support programs, from job training to new land reclamation and social infrastructure, aim to reduce dependence on fragile land resources. Ecological. Migration is no longer a distant concept. With today's scale and pace of climate change, it could become one of the biggest social challenges nations face. In China, it began years ago, quietly, but profoundly. Beyond this, desertification silently threatens food security. When land loses fertility and water becomes too scarce for irrigation, crops are the first casualty. In China, tens of thousands of hectares of farmland vanish annually under the relentless advance of sand and wind. Fields once growing barley, millet, or corn are now barren, unable to produce. This doesn't just affect one harvest, it undermines the foundation of sustainable agriculture. Meanwhile, international organizations estimate that to feed the global population by 2030, the world will need 300 million more hectares of farmland. Ironically, China, one of the world's most populous nations, is losing its precious arable land to desertification and degradation. This loss doesn't just strain domestic food self-sufficiency, it pressures global supply chains, especially amid unpredictable climate shifts and market shocks. From fields to dinner tables, the connection seems long, but is more fragile than ever when the earth can no longer sustain its people. As land turns arid, ecosystems don't just weaken, human lives spiral into instability. In China's heavily affected regions, groundwater, the lifeblood of survival, is rapidly depleting. Falling water tables make accessing clean water harder than ever. Drinking water, irrigation, daily use, all become critically limited resources in affected areas. Compounding this is another threat from the air, fine dust from frequent sandstorms. Together, these create a vicious cycle, triggering widespread public health issues. In severely impacted areas, rates of respiratory diseases, eye irritation, and skin conditions are rising, especially among children and the elderly, who have weaker immune systems. Fine dust also lodges in lungs, causing chronic conditions with long-term exposure. With unsafe air and scarce water, when life's most basic elements become scarce or harmful, the quality of life for millions quietly but deeply declines. As desertification spreads, its impact seeps into society and the economy. One of the clearest consequences is the migration wave from increasingly uninhabitable arid lands. This pressures major cities with population overload as rural residents flock to urban areas for new opportunities. But crowded cities are never an easy fix. The result, rising unemployment, growing social inequality, and public services strained by urbanization beyond control. Meanwhile, the cost of restoring degraded land is staggering. Estimates suggest reclaiming just one hectare of desertified land for agriculture costs up to $400 million, requiring three to under four years of sustained technical and ecological efforts. This doesn't account for the risk of re-degradation if climate conditions or management falter. Every square meter of lost land not only wastes resources, but triggers cascading, impacts on communities, jobs, and social stability. Desertification, in its broadest sense, erodes not just soil, but the livelihoods and futures of millions. There's no shortcut in the fight against deserts, but China has chosen a unique path, blending traditional knowledge, modern science, and cutting-edge technology to gradually restore land nature seemed to abandon. Early on, the method seemed simple but laid a critical foundation. One of the most groundbreaking yet basic techniques is the straw checkerboard, 1MX1M squares of rice straw, a harvest byproduct buried in the sand. These squares stabilize soil, slow surface winds, and retain moisture in the underlying layer. Beyond ecological benefits, 
This method doubles as environmental innovation. Instead of burning straw and polluting, the air, it's repurposed into an ecological grid, kickstarting land recovery. Though labor and time intensive, this technique has proven highly effective in stabilizing shifting sands, creating conditions for plants to take root. As mechanization, advanced, specialized machinery accelerated the process. Custom trench digging and straw laying machines scaled up sand coverage, boosting efficiency four to six times over manual labor. Mechanization not only sped up work, but ensured uniform, precise, and stable coverage, something traditional methods struggled to achieve across hundreds of thousands of hectares. Alongside this came a strategic shift in plant selection. Early efforts planted fast-growing non-native species like poplar or pine, but their low survival rates in arid conditions led to failure. Learning from this, Chinese ecologists pivoted to native species resilient to dry heat, such as goji berry, a biological barrier and valuable medicinal crop, saxul, a drought-tolerant, tree thriving deep in deserts, wolfberry and sea buckthorn, hardy shrubs with deep roots that anchor sand. Choosing suitable plants boosted survival rates, supported local ecosystems, attracted birds and insects, and gradually restored natural food chains. Another standout in China's restoration strategy is integrated ecological infrastructure. Beyond planting forests, China deployed sand-blocking railways and highways, paired with green belts, moisture-retaining materials, and windbreaks. Satellites and drones, for real-time monitoring, analyzing moisture data, detecting degradation, and tracking plant survival by season. These tools don't just aid afforestation. They optimize workforce allocation, water use, and early warnings for recurring desertification risks. As a result, the land restoration system has evolved into one of Asia's most advanced ecological management models. Since 2021, a bolder approach emerged, turning barren land into clean energy hubs. Deserts, unusable for farming, became sites for large-scale solar farms. The unique twist is combining agroforestry with renewables. Solar panels intersperse with plant belts, creating a two-in-one artificial ecosystem. Panels don't just generate power, they lower ground temperatures, block wind, and retain moisture, aiding land recovery and boosting plant survival. This model produces clean energy, creates local jobs, drives economic value, and reduces pressure on traditional resources like groundwater or timber. At its core, this is a dual strategy, leveraging deserts not as a weakness, but as a platform for ecological and energy innovation. This sand plus solar approach is now closely watched by other nations for potential replication. After nearly half a century, the Great Green Wall isn't just an ambitious blueprint. It's a living testament to nature's recovery when humanity commits to action. By 2024, China has restored over 30 million hectares of desertified land, an area the size of Italy. Once barren dust-swept lands now sprout green ridges, native plants are returning, and some areas even see a reappearance of native wildlife, a sign of vibrant ecosystems re-emerging. Alongside this, national forest cover has surged. From a modest 10% in 1949 to over 25% of mainland land today, a remarkable leap few developing nations have matched in the same time frame. The benefits go beyond maps. Sandstorm frequency and intensity in former hotspots like Inner Mongolia, Ningxia, and Xinjiang have dropped sharply, improving quality of life, reducing agricultural losses, and stabilizing transport and logistics in northwestern provinces. Notably, not just domestic groups but international scientific bodies recognize China's contributions to global ecological restoration. NASA Satellite data analysis from 2000-2017 shows 25% of the world's greening areas restored to vegetation came from China. This underscores the undeniable scale and impact of decades-long efforts. From a nation grappling with sand encroachment threatening millions, China has become a leading example of combating desertification through policy, science, and sustained commitment. Despite iconic achievements, the actual reduction in desertified land remains debated. Forbes reports that from 2014 to 2024, China's 
desertified land ratio dipped slightly, from 27.2% to 26.8%. While a positive sign, this shows restoration is slow and uneven across regions. Root causes include low plant survival rates, especially in ultra-arid areas like Inner Mongolia, where scarce irrigation and nutrient-poor soil force repeated replanting. Ongoing soil. Erosion and ecological degradation driven by overgrazing, uncontrolled extraction, and rising population pressure near deserts. High maintenance costs. Planting is just the start. Sustaining forests requires irrigation, soil protection, fire prevention, and biological monitoring, demanding billions annually. The saying, planting trees is easy, keeping them alive is hard, captures the challenge, facing the Great Green Wall. Ecological restoration isn't a short-term campaign, it's a journey requiring unwavering persistence across generations. Despite limitations, let's be clear. While many nations grapple with climate change's worsening impacts, China has turned a critical environmental challenge into an opportunity to reshape its global role in ecological restoration. With the Great Green Wall, China isn't just tackling a domestic issue, it's crafting a model exportable worldwide. Rather than focusing solely on climate pledges or international forums, they've turned their barren lands into a real-world lab for systematic ecological recovery. Though over 25 years remain until the projected 2050 finish line, lessons from the Great Green Wall's first half-century are already spreading beyond China. Nations facing severe desertification, from Africa's Sahel to the Middle East and Central Asia's semi-arid zones, are engaging with China's model. The Yoki African Union has even invited Chinese experts to advise and share technical insights for their own Greenbelt project. Meanwhile, International environmental research groups closely track the SAND plus solar model, where renewable energy farms integrate with ecological belts. Beyond land recovery, this creates jobs, supplies clean power, and drives economic momentum in areas once deemed unlivable. Within China, strategies are shifting towards sustainability, prioritizing native vegetation, restoring natural grasslands, and developing multifunctional ecological zones blending conservation, energy, and local livelihoods. From a domestic environmental project, the Great Green Wall is becoming a global model, where nature and technology work hand in hand to build the future. In contrast, the US, with superior technology and environmental research budgets, often pursues more localized anti-desertification efforts tied to states or regions. Small-scale successes like grassland protection in California or land restoration in Arizona exist, but lack a unified national strategy with the long-term vision of the Great Green Wall. The Great Green Wall isn't a miracle or a loud political statement. It's a quiet but weighty proof that humanity can reshape environments with enough persistence, strategy, and time. In a world divided by words and interests, ecological success becomes a universal language, stronger than any slogan. When barren, Land revives when forests rise from dust. Eyes from New York, Nairobi to New Delhi turn to look. A desert can't be tamed in a year. But over four decades, dune by dune, grain by grain, the sand has been pushed back. Not by magic, but by consistent choices and enduring commitments. China's Great Green Wall, with all its debates, limits and quiet triumphs, poses a big question to the world. If a desert can bloom, what else is possible? What do you think? Is China leading the 21st century's ecological race with this project? Drop your thoughts below. We'll pin the best comment. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to explore more stories about projects that could reshape our planet's future. Top 10 Discoveries official will return with more astonishing breakthroughs, monumental projects, and untold stories from around the globe. Goodbye, and see you next time.